Today we are starting trig. So we have trig broken into units. This is unit one, which is kind of the basics to trigonometry. And we have each unit divided into days. So this is trig unit one, day one. And we're going to learn some basics that are going to allow us to um, build on to learn the, the concepts of trig. So first we need to learn about angles in standard position. So we're going to have angles on basically the, the xy axis coordinate plane. We're going to translate rotations into degrees. We're going to map degrees into quadrants and define coterminals and basic and reference angle. And in particular, this is pretty important um, because it's going to help. If you understand that, it's really going to help you throughout the rest of at least the next two units. So trigonometry is Greek for measures of triangles. And it relates angles, coordinates, and ratios to the measures of triangles. We did some trig last year, and that should help you this year, hopefully. So standard position, what does it mean? On a standard grid, that means an xy axis, an angle and is in standard position if the vertex of the angle is at the origin. The initial side lies on the x-axis, so we've got two sides to a triangle. One side is called the initial side. That is a side that basically stays planted. The terminal side is the side that gets rotated to make the angle. So the terminal side has to be rotated from the x-axis. And here's a picture. So this is standard position. You can see here our vertex is on the, at the origin. This is our initial side here, which should be written in. And then this is our terminal side that gets rotated and it's rotated from the x-axis, so in this direction. So this is an example of an angle in standard position. Notice the angle has a name theta, so you will see often um, theta being used as a variable for an angle measured. So just like we use x as a vari variable for just a number, theta, which is a Greek letter, and it's a kind of an O or an oval with a slash through it, is often used as a, this actually is not theta. Theta looks more like this. <laughs> I'll have to fix that. So theta is basically stands for a variable for an angle measure. All right, so degrees on the xy axis. So the measure of an angle can be found via mapping of degrees on the xy axis. So there's a standard mapping of degrees and positions on your xy axis coordinate plane or axis. So here's our, and they're not marked, but this is our y-axis and this is our x-axis. So if we start here, remember this is our initial side starts here, so an angle like this would just be zero degrees. As we rotate around up here, so this angle here is 90 degrees. And notice we're, we're rotating in the counterclockwise um, we're, we're doing a counterclockwise rotation, that's standard. If we continued going around and had this angle, which is a straight angle, and we know from geometry that's 180 degrees, and you can keep going. So this angle here is 270 degrees, and then a full rotation. So if I start here and I go all the way around, that's 360 degrees. So those are your kind of basic general markings for angles in the coordinate plane. And as I say here, they go in counterclockwise directions. They're measured in a counterclockwise rotation. So one revolution or one complete rotation around is 360 degrees. A half a revolution is going to be half of 360 degrees or 180. A fourth of a revolution and this is all counterclockwise, and we're going to um, note counterclockwise CCW, so that stands for counterclockwise, is going to be a fourth of 360 degrees. So you can see if I had like five, whoops, not that. If I had five sixths of a rotation, I would just multiply 360 degrees by five sixths, divide out the sixth, so that's going to end up being five times 50 is that right? No, 60, sorry, which is going to be 300 degrees. So you just multiply 360 degrees by the fraction of your rotation, and that's going to give you your degrees.
So that is how you figure out degrees based on revolutions. If we go in the opposite direction, so clockwise, a fourth of a revolution clockwise, basically you figure out how many degrees a fourth of a revolution is. So that's going to be 360 divided by 4 or 90 degrees. And since we're going clockwise, we're going to take this 90 and subtract it from 360 and that's going to be 270 degrees. The other way to do it is subtract 1 fourth from 1. So 1 minus 1 fourth is equal to 3 fourths and multiply 360 by that. Either way will work for you. So here are some you should try on your own. 1 eighth of a revolution, the answer is already shown. This is counterclockwise. See if you can figure out what it is clockwise. And you probably want to try a few more examples. All right, so quadrants, we know what the quadrants are. This is 1, 2, 3, and 4. They also go in a counterclockwise method. So a 260-degree angle terminates in quadrant 3. So this is 260 degrees. So by knowing the measure of the angle, you can figure out which quadrant it's in. And this is counterclockwise. This is a positive 260 degrees. We can also have negative degrees. And that means negative degrees means you're going to go clockwise. Oops, clockwise. So a negative 100 means you're going to start here at 360 and go 100 degrees. And that's going to be what do you know? 260 degrees as well. So these basically stand for the same angle. So you should try these. Which, where do these, which quadrants do these terminate in? Make sure you can figure those out. Because knowing the quadrants is going to be important um, going forward as well. So the next concept is coterminals. And we kind of have looked, this is where this kind of embodies the, the uh, concept of coterminals. So a coterminal are angles in standard position that have the same terminal side. So we noticed in the last example, or the last slide, this negative 100 degrees and the positive 260 both ended up with their terminal side here. That means they are coterminals. So terminal side in the same place, coterminals. Maybe the, the part terminal in both of those will help you remember. All right, so here's examples. A positive 30 degree angle. So rotate your terminal side to 30 degrees. Or if you go 390 degrees. So look at the green kind of represents that. You're starting here. You're going to go 360 degrees, and then you're going to go 30 more degrees. So 390 and 30 degrees both end up with a terminal side here, which means they're coterminals. 270 and negative 90. So 270 is going to be this green, ends here. The negative 90 is the red. They both end up with this terminal side. And one thing I don't think I put in here, but we do need to know is these angles on the axis. So this is 0, 360. This is 90, 180, 270. These angles are called quadrantal angles. And this is going to come up. So they're quadrantal angles if they're on the, on the x, y axis, x or y axis. All right, find a positive and negative coterminal to 80. So how are we going to do this? Well, a full revolution will always get you to the same place no matter where you are in your x, y axis. So the best way to do it is to, multi uh, to add and subtract 360 degrees. Sometimes you have to add and subtract multiple times to get a positive or ne negative example. So if I add 360, I'm going to get 280. And if I subtract 360, I'm going to get negative 440. So all I had to do for this one is add and subtract 360 once. Okay, 110. So add 360 gives me 470. Subtract gives me 250. And let's see. 
As I say here, you can always find coterminals by adding or subtracting 360 to the original angle. Let's say I have 390 and I want a positive and negative. So if I subtract 360, I'm going to get 30 and I still don't have a negative one. So I'm going to have to subtract 360 again to get negative 330. So you're going to sometimes have to multiply or add or subtract Three, um, 360 more than once to get to the negative or the positive coterminal. To get the positive, I would just add 360 to this, and that's going to give me 750. All right, another, ex uh, another concept, the smallest positive coterminal. This is the coterminal that is between 0 and 360. So for each angle, you're going to have at least one, you're going to have one that is between 0 and 360. It might not be the original angle. So on my last slide, I had 390 degrees. Notice that is not the smallest positive coterminal. I have to subtract 360 from that to get 30, and that would be my smallest positive coterminal. If I have 30 degrees, 30 degrees is my smallest positive coterminal. So I don't have to do anything to the original angle to find the smallest positive coterminal. So let's look at example. 1200. So we want to get an angle between 0 and 360, so I'm going to keep subtracting 360. So 1200 minus 360 is 840. 840 minus 360 is 480. 480 minus 360 is 120. And if I subtract 360 from this, I'm going to get a negative angle. So that means this would be my smallest positive coterminal. A negative 450. So to get a positive coterminal, I'm going to have to add. So if I add 360, I'm going to get, what is that, 360, whoops, add 360. I'm going to get a negative 90. And I have to add 360 to that again to get 270 which is my angle between 0 and 360. So find smallest and positive coterminals for these angles. All right, our last concept, which is really important, is reference angles. <coughs> for an angle in standard position, a reference angle is the positive acute, doesn't say angle, it should, acute angle that means 90 degrees or less, formed by the x-axis and the terminal side. So this is important. To find a reference angle, you use the x-axis. Never, 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 never use the y-axis. So it's basically your reference angle is your distance in degrees from the x-axis. So never use y-axis to find your reference angle. And that's the biggest mistake I see. So here's a picture, here's our angle, and it's going to be some measure, it's going to be between 90 and 180, let's say it's um, 90 and 180, it's about 120 degrees. Our reference angle is the distance from this terminal side to the nearest x-axis, which happens to be this x-axis. So if I wanted to find this, I know this is 180 degrees. How many degrees is this? Well, it's going to be 180 minus 120, which is 60 degrees. So my reference angle is going to be 60 degrees. Notice the reference angle is going to be less than 90 degrees. <coughs> less than or equal to, sorry. And in fact, on the axes here, on the y-axis, your reference angle are, are your reference angles are going to be 90 degrees because it is 90 degrees away from any x-axis. All right, so there's you could probably figure this out on your own, but these are the rules for finding reference angle depending on your quadrant. So in quadrant one, all the angles are 90 degrees or less, so your reference angle is just the the angle itself. So one, it's just the angle. In quadrant two, which is this example, I took the angle, so I took the measure of the angle and I subtracted it from 180, and that's going to be your rule. You subtract the angle from 180 and that's going to give you your reference angle. In quadrant three, so let's say I have, get rid of all of this stuff, let's say I have this angle here. So I'm looking at the distance so this is some angle, angle, let's just say it's 230. The reference angle, the distance to the x-axis, it's going to be this distance. So I'm going to subtract 180 from this angle to get the distance 
what this measure is. And that's going to be our rule. So in quadrant 3, you're going to subtract your angle, your, your 180 from your angle. And then in quadrant 4, so I'm going all the way around, and let's say I've got 310 degrees here. So what's the distance to the x-axis? Well, this is my closest x-axis, so that's going to be the distance. So this is 360 degrees. To find this measure, I'm going to subtract this from 360, and that's our final rule. To find your reference angle in quadrant 4, you're going to subtract the angle from 360. If you logically think about it, if you remember, it's just the distance of the, from the terminal side to the nearest x-axis. You can figure it out without re remembering the rules, but initially you might just want to use the rules to help you get started. All right, so reference angle, what's the reference angle for 110 degrees? So that's in quadrant 2, and if I drew it, it would look, it would be here somewhere. And remember, it's going to be this distance. So if this is 110, this measure is going to be 180 minus 110, or 70 degrees. Whoops, or 70 degrees. The reference angle for 350. Come on. So 350 is going to be kind of like this. The reference angle, the distance from this terminal side to the nearest x-axis, so it's going to be this distance. If this is 350, I'm going to subtract this from 360 to get a reference angle of 10 degrees. Reference angle for 70, again, here's 70 degrees. Distance to the nearest x-axis is just 70 degrees, or the angle itself. And these would be ones that I would want you to try to see if you can figure out what the reference angle is. So that wraps up Trig Unit 1, Day 1. We have a worksheet for homework. Um, so we're not doing things from the book. We do it a little bit differently. And we do our homework from worksheets. And you'll get a new worksheet pretty much every day. Bring questions to class.